Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name is Becca, and if it's your first time joining me, then I'm so glad you're here. This is actually my first real sit-down video in our new place. So we're still figuring out lights and all of that. It's a pretty gloomy day outside, but I'm excited to be back and sharing some content, and I have so many video ideas, so many things I need to film this week before I take some time off for the holidays. So today's video is all about my favorite lip products with chubby doe foot applicators. I realize that's kind of a specific category, but these are all products that sort of live in my purse. They're purse lip products. And I realized as I've been moving and organizing and sorting through my makeup and decluttering all of that stuff that, that comes with a move, that there definitely is a pattern in the kind of lip product I like to use that's easy to wear, that's moisturizing, that is not too much of a commitment, like it will wear off, but it wears off gracefully or I can easily reapply it. And the kind of thing that is pleasurable to use, I find myself um, finding some comfort and relief in the moisture that these products give to my lips and the way that they moisturize my lips over time. So those are all you know, qualities that these lip products have in common. So let's get right into it. First up is the Dior Lip Glow Oil. So I love the Dior Lip Glow line. The balm actually is probably one of my most repurchased products of all time. It's um, kind of a sheer tinted balm that moisturizes the lips. This is obviously very different in formula, but the Lip Glow line in general is meant to be an easy to wear, sheer wash of color, moisturizes the lips, hydrates them over time. And so the oil is actually kind of a gloss oil hybrid, I would say. This is the packaging. It's beautiful and it comes, as you can see, with this chubby doe foot applicator. It has the most satisfying little pop. I'm starting with this one because in a way it's kind of set the bar for all of the other chubby <laughs> doe foot applicators that I'm going to discuss. It's almost a teardrop paddle shape it's slightly curved and it really hugs the lips. I have this in the shade 001 pink, which is the original, but they've since come out with many, many different tints of this. I think there's like cherry, there's mahogany, there are so many different shades. I would really like the mahogany version of this. I think that's a newer shade. So this smells a little bit like vanilla cupcakes. It's not overly scented, it's a quite soft scent. I don't have anything on my lips now, I'm just going to apply the Dior Lip Glow Oil in the shade Pink. So I think you can see it has almost like a firmness that allows you to really hug the lips with the applicator. And because the whole thing is curved, it feels very soft on the lips kind of pillowy, like a cushion that you're using to apply the product with. And I, I love the kind of short, chubby nature of the applicator overall. This has the lip oil quality in that it seems to have a lot of moisture and emollients in the formula, but it's not sticky. Like when I stick my lips together, they're not sticking together. And they're kind of like a gloss in that they have that shine. And I feel like overall it makes your lips, um, it kind of smooths over and fills in any ridges or lines in your lips and it makes them appear fuller and also feel fuller. There's no menthol or mintiness or any lip plumping action like that, but just by virtue of almost like smoothing out the surface of the lip, it makes your lips look a little bit glassier and therefore fuller. And obviously you can see the pink tint on the lips. It's, it's very subtle and natural. I don't often go for a pink tint in lip colors because I feel like sometimes they're almost a little bit too candy-like, but there's something about the pink shade in the lip glow line that actually looks very youthful. It gives you a quite youthful, energetic flush, like you've been out for a run or you've been out in the cold and it's not 
a candy pink. It's more of a natural, lively pink. And I feel like this is one of those shades that kind of looks different depending on your natural lip color and the way that um, this shade looks over that. It's, it's just like a light veil of tint over your lips. So it's also very comfortable. It is a thicker formula. It has a bit of grip to it, and because of that, I find it much more long-lasting than some other lip oils that are much more slippery, that are much more like an just a traditional like oil, like a drop of oil that slips around. This has a thickness and a body and a grip to it that allows it to moisturize your lips over time. I also really love wearing this under a mask if I'm gonna be out for a while, if I'm gonna go run some errands and I know I'm gonna have my mask on for a long time. It is comfortable enough that even if it gets a little bit on my mask, it's not smearing everywhere. And because it has that grip, it lasts for a little while. And for that reason, it's just, it's just easy to wear. So this is really the product that has kind of set the bar for the other products that are going to come. Next up is the Lawless Forget the Filler Lip Plumping Line Smoothing Gloss. This is similar to the Dior in some ways and also very different in others. It's similar in that it's very sheer. You can see it has like a very, very subtle pink tint, but it's, it's mostly clear. And this is what the packaging looks like. It comes in this frosted glass, and this has a similarly chubby doe foot applicator. So you can see this one is a little bit shorter of a doe foot and a little bit more angled. Like it has like this kind of curve to the applicator itself. So I'm going to apply it now. I have nothing on my lips. I do love this applicator. It has that curve. It's almost like a seat. And so it picks up product like in the curve and it applies it to your lips really beautifully. So here is the Lawless. Now this formula, it does have a fragrance. It's slightly fruity on the initial smell. It has, yeah, just a, not like a real fruit smell, kind of an artificial fruity smell. It's fine, I don't mind it. Um, it actually does have a bit of menthol, and I typically don't like lip products with menthol in them. I find that they actually have a short-term effect of maybe plumping your lips because it's actually irritating the lips through the use of menthol or cinnamon or any other kind of spicy ingredient, but they have the long-term effect of drying out your lips because it actually irritates your lips. So I don't typically like that. This has just enough that I feel the menthol on my lips, but not enough that it's irritating. I feel like they've done a good job of balancing and towing that line of just enough menthol. Now this product I feel like makes my lips look the biggest and the juiciest probably of all of the products I've listed here. Obviously the main feature is lip plumping and line smoothing. It's in the name and even more than the Dior, it does kind of create that glass-like mirror-like shine over the lips and it does make them look fuller. And I think that slight addition of menthol does help in creating a plumping effect on the lips. Not so much that it's irritating, but just at my limit of what I will tolerate. And I do because it, I feel like it makes my lips look really good. It's one of those things that in person it makes your lips look really shiny and juicy and glossy. And it does last for a little bit because it has like a cushiony, cushiony, thicker feel. It has a bit of grip. It's not a very thin, oily gloss that's just gonna slide off. It has the feel almost of like a lip mask, but with the added benefit of the lip plumping and lip smoothing properties. Next up is a drugstore pick, and this is the Revlon Super Lustrous, it's just called The Gloss, in the shade um, 200 Crystal Clear. So it looks like this, clear plastic tube, and this also has a very large, chubby angled doe foot applicator. It's definitely a smaller applicator than the Dior and the Lawless, but it's still relatively large and it's angled as well. 
So this is a very straightforward clear gloss. It's very reminiscent of like the early 2000s. Clear gloss was all the rage. That like early aughts clear gloss moment. Um, and it reminds me of being in like middle school and um, carrying around clear lip gloss, mostly because that's the only thing my mom let me wear. Um, but this is really nice in that it, it has that same effect of making your lips look really shiny, glossy. It's not as sophisticated as obviously the higher end formulas, but it is still just as satisfying to wear and put on because that doe foot applicator is so large. So this is definitely a slightly thinner formula than the Dior and the Lawless products. It's not as, as cushiony, but it does have a nice um, smoothing effect over the lips. Like I can feel that it has a bit of body and it's not quite as um, emollient, but it has that cushiony gloss effect. I think you can really see that the this one is clear, whereas the other two that I previously used are tinted. Even though the difference is very subtle, I think you can see this one doesn't add that natural flush to the lips. It is purely clear and sheer, whereas these two products are tinted. And even though they're only slightly tinted, it's just enough to enhance a natural flush in your lips. So you can see like these three compared to each other, this is purely clear, crystal clear, as the name says. The Dior is probably the most tinted of these three, and the Lawless is somewhere in between, but even though it's in between, that little bit of tint does do something to enhance a natural flush in the lips. The next gloss is also a clear gloss, but it's a higher end version of a clear gloss, which is the Fenty Gloss Balm in the shade Glass Slipper. So obviously, you know the Fenty Gloss Balm formula. It's beautiful, it's moisturizing. The original Fenty Gloss Balm in Fenty Glow is one of my favorite glosses of all time. I've actually emptied that and I don't have it in my collection at the moment, but I have two others and this is the first one. This was actually gifted to me by my friend Faith, Faith Pate here on Instagram and on YouTube. You should give her a follow and I'll link her info below. But she kindly sent me this in a piece of friend mail and and it's like the clear gloss I didn't know I needed. It's shiny, it's glossy, it's glassy, it's moisturizing, and of course it has the iconic Fenty packaging, which is, looks like this. And even though these are not quite as chubby of doe foot applicators as the first three, was it three? Yeah, three that I showed you. These are still thicker and wider in circumference than your traditional lip gloss applicator. Like the other Fenty glosses, this has a slightly fruity smell. It's definitely a stronger fruity smell than like the Lawless. I love it. It's, it's quite sweet and um, there's something nostalgic about it. It kind of reminds me, takes me back to, like I said, the early 2000s. So here it is on. I do find that this formula is slightly, slightly stickier than the Lawless or the Dior Lip Oil. This is definitely more of a traditional gloss in that it has a bit of that ooey gooeyness. Not in a bad way, I actually like that. I feel like that is what makes it moisturizing over time. And for a gloss, not all glosses do that, you know what I mean? A lot of glosses, look and give the appearance of glossiness and shine, but actually dry out the lips. Whereas this is a gloss, a true gloss that does all of the gloss things, but also moisturizes and hydrates the lips over time. And even when it wears off, I'm left with pretty soft, comfortable lips. As with any clear gloss, I love to wear both of these over a lip liner. That's true actually of all of these products. I love to wear these over a lip liner, um, maybe with a slightly overlined lips for the biggest, plumpest, juiciest lip look. Um, that's definitely the way to go to enhance your lips um, for a maximum big lip effect. But on their own, these both are great. Then I have another shade of the Fenty Gloss Balm, which is the Hot Chocolate shade. This is such a cool shade. It's like a deep brown, and it has flecks of like rose gold, almost flecks of copper. It's very shiny. Um, compared to the original Fenty 
what do I, why do I keep forgetting the name? Fenty Glow. Um, hot chocolate does have slightly larger glitter particles. Fenty Glow has that shine running through it, but the particles are a little bit smaller. But nonetheless, I really like this, even though I can slightly feel the glitter because I feel like it's such a unique shade. So let me show you. This definitely has like a Clinique black honey effect where it looks deep in the tube, but because it's a sheer color, it is very different on the lips than you would expect. So here's hot chocolate on the lips. I actually really love it with the color of the sweater that I'm wearing. I feel like that's really flattering. And I love this shade in the fall and winter. It just adds that, yeah, hot chocolate cocoa effect to the lips. It's a slight wash of brown, but depending on your natural lip color, if you're wearing lip liner, it just adds a bit of like depth and warmth and kind of sexiness to the lips without overpowering it the way that a traditional like lipstick would. Even though this has slightly more glitter in it than I think I mentioned the Fenty Glow does, I would never call it gritty. It's not um, chunky at all. It's more that when I press my lips together, I can slightly feel it, like if I think about it, but if I'm not thinking about it, I don't feel it. And I just think it's a really flattering shade. I think also if you're a person of color, if you have deeper skin tones, this would be a really, really beautiful shade on you. And paired with like a deep brown liner, it's a very sexy lip look. I've got another drugstore pick that many have called a dupe for the Fenty Gloss Bombs. I don't think they're identical, but they are very similar and share a lot of similar qualities. So these are the Maybelline Lifter Glosses. The packaging is just beautiful for drugstore packaging. They have these clear acrylic tubes and you can see the product inside. They're square tubes. And this is what the doe foot looks like. So the doe foot itself is very similar to the Fenty Gloss Bombs. So I have two shades here, O10 Crystal, and this one is called O9 Topaz. These both have a bit of shine and sheen running through them. I have another one of these that's just the cream formula, but I actually don't like that one as much. I find it to be a bit streaky. So I like, in this range, I like the ones with the shine running through them better. I think the this shade, what is it called again? Topaz. Topaz is definitely close to the original Fenty Glow. Um, these two, which are sort of in the same shade family, are still very different. You can see that Crystal has like a gold sheen running through it, whereas Hot Chocolate leans more mahogany, burgundy. It has that red undertone running through it. Crystal is again one of those shades that I think would look beautiful on deeper skin tones, people of color, because it has that bronzy undertone running through it. I think you can immediately see that this has much more of a gold flash. It's a bit frosty even. It has that actually 90s frosty lip vibe that um, my mom used to wear lipsticks like these all the time. She used to wear... Um, brown lipsticks with gold frost running through them so this is also kind of nostalgic for me i feel like because this has that bronze gold undertone running through it 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 flatters my golden undertones and this gloss looks beautiful with a bronzy bronzy eye a golden eye a really bronzy cheek and like a a glossy golden highlight um it's a really beautiful and pretty unique gloss shade, I think. This is more of a look in that it it's it calls for a particular kind of makeup in terms of color tone and family, but I do really enjoy wearing it and I find it to be pretty unique. The other shade, Topaz, is the kind of thing that I can wear with any makeup look. I feel like it's very uh, close to the color of my natural lips and so it doesn't look like it's adding much tint even though it is bringing some life to my lips. The sheen running through this one is much more neutral. The other one is obviously gold. This is more of like a champagne. There's a bit of silver 
it's not nearly as warm as the other shade. So I think you can see this added a pinky flush, but the pink in this gloss isn't a cool toned pink. It's pretty neutral leaning warm. It has a bit of, yeah, like a slight bit of beige in it. And I find that really flatters my skin tone and it makes my lips look bigger because it is so close to my natural lip color that it adds a bit of, just an extra bit of oomph. These are definitely on the thinner side of glosses compared to the Fenty, Fenty glosses, for example. Those are richer, they're a little bit more ooey gooey. These are definitely thinner. They're not as long lasting because they don't have that gooey grip. Um, but I don't mind because this is the kind of thing that I mentioned, this shade specifically, that I can throw on and go anytime, anywhere. These do have a slightly slightly cakey vanilla kind of scent. It's pretty subtle. It's not the kind of thing I can smell when it's on the lips. It is more subtle than I think the Fenty scent is, which is a little bit stronger and it's fruity versus cakey. Then I have the Urban Decay, what are these called? The Plumping Shine Balm. Specifically, I love the shade Runyon. If you haven't caught on by now, I love like a caramely, tone for my skin tone. I love the browns, I love the neutrals, I love the 90s cocoa shades, and I feel like this is such a unique gloss shade in that it's almost a yellowy undertone caramel. So these are a more recent release from Urban Decay. I actually have a video on Instagram lip swatching um, some of the shades, and I do like several of the others. I'm just calling out Runyon because I think it is such an interesting and unique shade. These are Plumping Shine Balms, so you have to think of it more as like a liquefied lip balm than a gloss in itself. So this is a rather thin paddle applicator, but it has a wide surface across the lips. So even though it's thin in terms of width, it actually has that surface area across the actual applicator to apply it to the lips. And it, this is actually quite a flexible applicator. It's also kind of an unusual applicator in that it's angled right here. I don't know if you can see, it's not symmetrical. It's like a, an angled paddle. Because this is a plumping balm, it does have a bit of menthol in it, but it's very, very minimal. I would say it's, oh my gosh, sorry. There's so much construction happening outside. We're just gonna keep going. I would say this has about 50% of the menthol that the Lawless Gloss has. It's not anywhere near as noticeable. Not even like the Lawless is that noticeable, but comparing the two, this is much more subtle. And I don't feel like as much tingling um, in terms of activity on the lips. Um, it just has just a little bit. Mostly I love this for the shade, I feel like this also looks good with the top that I'm wearing today. It has, because it has that yellow undertone, it's quite flattering on me. I especially love this shade when it's paired with some of my favorite lip liners, like the Victoria Beckham Lip Definer in the shade O2, um, the Makeup Forever Anywhere Caffeine Lip Liner, and the Makeup Forever Endless Cacao Lip Liners, any of those like cocoa, brown undertone, brownie rose lip liners look really beautiful when they're paired with this to give you that, yeah, that 90s lip look. The last lip products with chubby doe foot applicators that I love are the Vesca Creamy Lip, or Lush Glow Creamy Lip Oils. So I have two shades here. These are my two most worn. The top is the shade Lotus and the bottom is the shade Ginger Lily. And I, I use them pretty much interchangeably. I hear people talk about Vesca on YouTube mostly with their bronzers, which they have an amazing, very inclusive range of matte powder bronzers. But I never see people talk about these. Um, they were released last year, so they're not a new product. But I still find this formula to be really unique. They're probably the most different of all of the lip products that I've shared. All of the lip products I've shared toe the line between a gloss and a lip oil, and these are much more of a liquefied lip balm slash oil. They don't have that stickiness, that grippiness that um, you expect from a gloss. These are a truly, like if you took a lip balm, an oily lip balm, 
and melted it down, you would get this formula. They don't have any shimmer running through them. They're truly just a cream finish, but these shades are really, really flattering. And there are some interesting shades in this range too. There's a red, there's a deep chocolatey brown that I think would be beautiful on deep skin tones. So let me just show you. These applicators are similar to the Fenty lip gloss applicators. They're chubbier, but longer and slightly angled. So I'm wearing Ginger Lily here, which is a great pinky nude for my skin tone and depth. It's well named, it's a creamy, they call it the creamy lip oil, and it is much more of a cream. It doesn't set down, but it's not glossy. It's not ooey gooey. It doesn't have any of that stickiness or grip or tack. It's just like a cream that coats your lips. The worry with any cream finish without any sheen running through it is that it can look streaky on the lips. These don't do that. They are really even across the lips. They give you a really smooth application. And even though they're quite pigmented, they don't look streaky. These don't have any menthol in the formula and they don't claim to be lip plumping, so they're not gonna make your lips look bigger. They're more just of almost like a vinyl effect because they add that shine and that smooth layer of creamy color across the lips, but it's so moisturizing. They're so balm-like, like a liquefied lip balm. I keep saying that. And even though these are not grippy, they don't move around and slide around on the lips. I think that's also the worry with a more pigmented liquid lip color that's not matte, is that you worry that it might migrate outside of the lip lines, and it doesn't do that even though it's so pillowy and cushiony and creamy. So I find this to be a really well-balanced and quite unique lip formula. And then I'll apply the shade Lotus which is slightly deeper, a mid-tone rose. So this is the shade Lotus. It's a mid-tone rose, but it still has a bit of brightness to it. I feel like both of these shades actually do add a bit of light and brightness to my face, and they are really complementary with my skin type. So that is Lotus. And even though these have quite a bit of pigment in them, it's really easy to overline the lips with because they don't migrate outside of the lip lines. They give you that smooth lip, creamy lip effect, um, but they're still super comfortable to wear. And so you don't feel like you're compromising comfort for pigment. You actually get comfort and pigment and moisture without migration and it's a beautiful formula. So that's everything. Those are all of the lip products that I enjoy with chubby doe foot applicators that bring me joy when I wear them. And not only joy, they also bring comfort, relief, moisture, and they look really pretty. And these are all things that live in my purse and in and out of any bag that I'm carrying. So I will list everything down in the description box, of course. I hope you enjoyed. If you're not subscribed, I would love for you to subscribe, like, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.